Alright, so welcome back to my team career mode. It's been a little while since I've been uh, on here, but uh, been a bit too busy with some other series going on. But we are back, and as you can see, for the big one, the Monaco Grand Prix, for the first of two times during the season, we're going to be running a one-off livery. Monaco is, of course, the most historic race. It's one of the originals, and we're going to mark the occasion with a one-off livery. Uh, here it is. It is basically just a red and white car to because you know the Monaco flag is white and red uh, It's that simple and uh, you'll see the other one off livery later on But let's not waste any time and head into arguably the most important session of the entire season qualifying at Monaco Right, so I think what I'm going to do is go for two Q1 runs. I have no idea how quick I am in comparison to the other cars. Uh, I also need to change my name to Crim Foot Foot Crim, so it actually shows Foot Crim on the leaderboard. Right, let's not waste any time. I've got the setup ready. I'll quickly run through it because it's very good for like, qualifying in the race. Uh, start aerodynamics, 50-40A. Transmission, 50-53. 2.51, 0.06, and 0.27, 12, 772, 36, 42, 154, and then you can just pause it and copy it. So uh, let's make sure I got as low a few as possible and head out for a very intense Monaco Q1. Let's have it. The car is looking very nice, I must say. Well, Sergio Perez, don't do what you did in real life and crash into the first corner on your first lap of Q1. Got an Alpine coming beside me. Let's get out of his way. Nice and easy. Clear for traffic. I want to sort of try and stay behind the Alpine whilst charging up my battery and tyres because uh, I don't really want to be stuck in traffic, which is uh, like the main problem around here. So let's just try and warm the tyres up. I don't think I'll be able to get them too high, but I'd say like mid-80s will be good enough. I might even have to do two warm-up laps. We'll see what the temp's like at the end of Sector 2. Right, so the temps are okay enough, so I'm going to turn on the hot lap, and here we go. This is my first ever lap of qualifying in my team career around Monaco. Be easy on the traction. I've spun there many a times before, and the lap has begun. Into turn one, don't go over that bump and go into track limits. We've got Sonoma in front. He's not going to get out the way, so we're already going to lose quite a bit of time behind him. Let's just try and do as quick as possible. Right, now he's getting out the way. Thank you. Decent sector one. I don't think it's very competitive because of the traffic. It will spin there. Not ideal. Try and avoid hitting that wall. Small lift around here. About half throttle. Touch of the brakes. And want to absolutely blast it through the tunnel. Heavy braking into the chicane. Decent exit. Now this corner is really tricky to keep out the wall. I've done that okay. Fastest sector two, but not many people have set lap times yet. Round the swimming pool chicane. Heavy braking into the penultimate corner. Stay out the wall. Half traction. Round the final corner. Full throttle. And for a first lap around Monaco, that ain't too bad as we actually go fastest overall ahead of the likes of Sergio Perez, Carlos Sainz and both Mercedes. Alright, that's encouraging. I'll see what the times are and I might not even have to go for a Q2 run. Not, sorry, not Q2 run, a second Q1 run. I'm just going to get it back to the pits though. Right, so as you can see, my Sector 2 is unbelievable compared to the rest of the field. I can easily find like a 10 or 2 improvement in Sector 3, but that Sector 2 time is unreal. And I mean, 1.6 seconds ahead of Q1 uh, 16th. I think I'm alright to so just skip to the end, you know? So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And as you can see, no one improved, so quite remarkably, P1 in Q1. Sadly, my teammate for the, well, this entire season fails to get out of Q1, but is it last? So well done, Isuma. Well done, mate.
All right, I'm going to go for a Q2 lap. I feel like it'd be pretty difficult to get into Q3, but you never know what could happen. I'm going to go for the best lap I possibly can in an extremely beautiful looking car that is performing well. All right, this has not been a very good lap from Foot Crim. I don't know if it's going to be anywhere close enough. Ninth! Hang on. There's a chance here. Everyone is still on a lap, but there is a very slim chance I could find myself in Q3 here. Right, let's see where that puts us. Are we in Q3? No, we miss out, but 13th is a strong result, to be fair. I mean, we are still in a very slow car compared to the rest of the field, and that Q2 lap wasn't very good i think it was actually slower than my q1 lap but i'm not too sure but 13th is a very strong starting position with a couple retirements maybe one or two overtakes and a decent strategy points is possible but unlikely since you know it's monaco it's a place known for not advancing very much you know got like a 25 lap race ahead of us let's see what we can do Right, it is race time in Monaco. The strategy is actually, for one of the first times this series, a soft tyre strategy. This is rare. 27 lap race. Let's not waste any time and begin the formation lap. Now, I will say as well, my components are running a bit weak, so... I've chosen not to put new ones in because it's Monaco. There's barely any engine required because there's such little straight line speed needed. Uh, but next race, I'll probably be fitting a new internal combustion engine and all that goodies. Also, I want to say before uh, the race starts, we're on the formation lap. I'm on the road to 1,000 subscribers. I want to hit it by the end of the year. I've been popping off recently with the shorts and the videos. So thank you for the support on those. And uh, if you subscribe now, you will get... A brand new pair of Lightning McQueen Wellington boots for the absolute best experience at muddy, muddy, muddy puddle jumping. So if you fancy that, subscribe now. And without further ado, let's race. Here we go then. Let's reach optimal RPM. Five lights. And we are away in Monaco. Let's just try and... Oh, hang on. We're already ahead of two cars. Three cars. What has happened there? Why have so many cars got a slow start in front of me? I can't get a very good exit, but I am ahead of two cars already. Archon has just slipped past. We've almost slipped into the points almost instantly. I don't even know how that's happened. I'm a bit confused. Couldn't have really asked for a better start there. And now into the slowest corner on the entire calendar. Look at everyone and how slow we're going. It's quite hilarious. So as you can see, everyone around me is on hard to medium. So if I can just sort of do what I'm currently not doing, which is stay with them, there's a chance, but they're gone. Hang on. There's a potential move here on Ocon. No. Maybe down the street will be ERS. Absolutely powering. Round the outside, he's squeezing me a bit. Good traction. Oh, that's a fantastic move there. Past Esteban Ocon. And on lap two of this race, I'm already up into 10th. Which, of course, allows us to score a point. And now it's just maximum push. Try and stay with the other cars so I can get involved with a bit of a DRS train. But what a start. Potential move coming on Fernando Alonso. Round the outside we go. Good traction. Stick with it. Ah, oh, bit of wall contact. We are through. And I think the wing is okay. Yes, the wing is okay. So, I am now up into ninth place. These soft tyres is working really, really well. Although, I kind of want to be trying to save them for a little while. And also not losing laps i'm trying to overtake so i might just stick behind cars now but ninth what a result this is so far making ground on yuki sonoda right now setting the fastest sector two of the race just trying to keep the car in a straight line as i'm going to try the exact same thing on alonso bit too far back but 
I do have DRS. Yuki Sonoda doesn't. ERS as well. Going around the din side. On the brakes. And we are through. This is unreal scenes right now. And a disclaimer as well. I increased the difficulty from qualifying. It just shows how good the race pace is on these soft tiles. Although, as I completely crash and break my front wing, I am expecting a bit of a challenge going to the second stint as every other car will be on softer tires than me. And I don't know if you can hear, but there's an alarm going off. And I don't know what the alarm's for. So I'm just going to stop the alarm. I'm currently driving one-handed. There we go. I don't even know what that alarm's for. Race pace is very strong, though. I know I keep saying it, but I'm just so impressed. Like, we're already making massive gains on signs. Which is one of the big six cars. And we're actually ain't too bad. Only 14% in five laps. Uh, we are pitting on lap 12, so it's probably going to be around 32% or something is my guess. Engine is running a bit low on durability right now. DRS enabled on Carlos Sainz and Pierre Gasly, but uh, so do they, so it doesn't really matter. But you know, as long as I can stay in the one second, it should be alright. As you can see, I've already pulled a two second gap on Sonoda. Situation report, currently lap 7. Definitely sticking with Sainz and Gasly, not really making an impact on them, but that is absolutely fine. And we're pulling a very slow and gradual gap on Sonoda. It's about half a tenth a lap at the moment, and we're only five laps away from the first pit stop. And I think the only pit stop as well. Okay, so on lap nine, tyres are starting to go off a bit, as you can see. Sonoda's pulling it back by a tenth or two a lap. Sainz and Gasly are pulling away by a 10 4 2 lap. This is sort of that transition phase when the, the soft tyres run out, but the mediums are hard, are still very much in their, like, good phase. Luckily, though, I've only got to survive about three more laps before coming into the pits for a lovely new, fresh set of mediums. So, should be able to hang on until then. Might be able to do better than hang on. I'm right at the back of signs. He had a bit of wheel spin coming out of the chicane. Ah, uh, I just don't have enough straight line, which to be fair is way and almost not enough traction either. Okay, tires are definitely going now. I'm gonna have to be a bit careful around these slow corners. Apparently, the gap to my teammate is zero seconds. Uh, I don't, I don't really see that very likely. Had a massive bit of oversteer there. That is not going to help me as Sainz pulls away by about five tenths and Sonoda catches me up by five tenths, but still outside of DRS, so I'm fine from overtaking. It's just that's going to lose me a lot of time as we get further into the race. So Alright, this is the lap I'm going into the pit, so I am going to spunk a load of my ERS, try and like. I don't know, catch up, I guess. I don't really know. The car's really on edge, though, now. Like, 41% deg is not what you want around here, which is full of low-speed corners. It is the opposite of what you want. Now, I've had a very strong lap as I go into the pits. Got back in with DRS as signs, but... Now we head into the pits. Let's hope for a decent stop. No malfunctions. That would be ideal. Into the pits. We must go. 2.4. I don't know how that works. Estimated stop 2.5. 2.5. And mine's 2.4. But I don't really care. We move back on track. If I can stay ahead of the Williams. Which I do. That's a good stop. I am now in clean air, just got to stay ahead of the Williams, which should be a piece of piss. There it is. And that is very good for my race, as I'm now in a lot of clean air. Now, 
I am no longer in a lot of clean air. Good exit from the chicane. Going down the inside of Hulkenberg there on the chicane. That's my third overtake or fourth overtake at Monaco, which is quite rare in itself. Although I'm trying to not lose, not lose too much time because I know if I lose too much time, then Sonoda's going to do me and that would not be ideal. He's used a bit of ERS down the straight. Sonoda's not even come in yet. He's staying out for another lap. All the cars are now coming into the pits. I make my way back into ninth. I think that tells me that Mr. Kevin Magnus is in front. If I get a bit of information... Magnuson is still yet to pit, so I could just stay behind him and I'll just move in front anyway. But that's not who I am. He squeezes me to the wall. As I do a switcheroo, he's got to give me some space as we now go around the outside, not clipping wheels, and I'm in front. That was a really good move and also very good thumbnail material. Little bit of contact, but you know me, I can't just stay behind him until he goes into the pits. I need to get that move done. I'm a greedy bastard. Situation report. Lap 17 out of 27. So there's 11 laps left. Yeah, including this one. Pace is very strong. I'm not really catching up to Perez. Oh, I clicked the wall a bit there. Not really catching up to Perez, but I am sort of keeping the gap the same to Gasly as well. So everything is going well so far. I've also just realised, I don't know if there was some pit stop fiddle or something that went wrong, but I've gone from P8 to P6. I'm not too sure how that's happened because no one's retired from the race. But I mean, I'll take it. Now, unfortunately, Gasly and Signs are really starting to catch me up now. I think they, uh, I think they're having a bit of tire, uh, what, what's the word? Warm up. Getting their tyres warmed up and look at them. They're catching up at like three tenths a corner. So I must have undercut them while they were in traffic or something. Because I was behind Alonso and uh, Gasly, I think. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah. So I've undercut Gasly by a huge margin. God knows how that's happened. But as you can see, they're catching up so quick and there's not much I can do about it. And one thing I've noticed is that every time I do a bit of commentary, I crash or cock it up. For the majority of this race where I've been staying silent, I have not hit the wall once. But for some reason, as soon as I start commentating, maybe it's because I lose a tad of concentration, I start hitting walls. Good thing is though, it is Monaco, so even if Gasly can catch up, I'm going to try and make it as difficult as possible for him to pass me. So as you can see, Gasly is right up my ass now, which is not ideal. I should be able to keep him behind though, because, well, it's Monaco after all. Right, well then, as I go around the final corner, we head into the penultimate lap. Oh, one of, Gasly's car's blown up as well. What a result that is. Right, let's go for one little final lap here into the first corner. That's a decent exit as well. I'm going to spunk my entire ERS here. Such a braking as I go around this turn. Don't clip that wall. Little touch of braking. Try not to hit the inside wall or that wall. Don't lose traction. A little bit later on the brakes than usual, doesn't hurt anyone. Almost lost the car there, swing around the air pin. Slight lift, signs is gaining, that's fine, don't care, didn't ask plus ratio. Traction, very good, very nice at that corner. ERS through the tunnel and then very late and heavy on the brakes into the chicane. Leclerc has won his home Grand Prix. What a result that is. The car is feeling extremely heavy and shit right now. Old tyres, but we do have low fuel. 
let's get a decent final couple corners here. There we go. And as we come down the final straight, this has been an emphatic Monaco Grand Prix. I've enjoyed every second of it. I hope you have too. If you did, smash a like. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay. I don't really see that very likely.